hello everyone in this video we will see how to use Qt creator if you have seen the previous video you might be knowing how we created this QI part in the designer this is the Qt designer if you haven't seen it I will recommend please go back and see that video first so now we will see how to import this designer into Qt creator okay this UI file so go to your Qt creator create a new project as we are using widgets it will be Qt widget application so before we get into it I would like to tell you can assign functionality to the widgets which we used in the Qt designer by two ways one being the coding part another way by being another by using signal and slots actually in both the methods we use signal and slots but for the first part we will be writing a code few lines of codes and for the second part we will be directly connecting signals and slots in the ui file when we'll get to it you'll come to know so there will be two parts i'll be starting with the first part so let's the coding part so let's name it coding because when we are going write, to write, write few lines of code for it give it a path so I'll make sure that the project in creator is in the same directory as in the project and designer don't create it in the inside this file where you save the designer files please don't create it outside click next as we are gonna build for desktop just select the desktop part don't select any other kit so you're using widgets so your base class should be Q widget. if you go back in Qt designer and uh, you will see the options over here um, the base uh, okay I'll show you in the creator itself so keep your base class Q widget give your class name that which was in the Qt designer so your object name over here was form so better you keep it the same form oops I wrote form form and uh, this you can give the name of your design file which was design.ui and click next finish so here Qt creator has given you a skeleton of code like you have a UI over here which is nothing right now so what we are gonna do we are gonna import the UI which we built in Qt designer in Qt creator so before we do that if you can see this design go and edit is using Q widgets which is the base class and the name is form now when we'll import the other file you will come to know why I asked you to keep the name form itself so go ahead and uh, you can remove this file and uh, go to the folder copy the design files this is the UI file this is the image the logo which we are using and this is the resource file which is making the UI file able to access this logo okay. so we just copy this we paste it over here we delete this file because we are not going to needing this we got a new design file of our own and then when we go back to Qt creator it will ask you that the design.ui has changed outside do you want to reload it say yes to all and now right click it add existing files you need to add design.ui you need to add the logo and you need to add the resource file say so open so over here you can see the logo the resource file and this is the design UI file which you created and imported from Qt designer so if you double click this you can see the design which we dis developed in Qt designer is now available in Qt creator and now if you go in the edit part 
you can see the base class of that file also was Qt widget and the class oops, uh, um, okay it won't change because we can in Qt creator we can't change the code it is read only you can this, this file is on, can only be edited in design mode we can't edit the code so you can see over here the base class is QWidget while the object name is form that's why I made you sh made sure that you name it form so now if we run this you can access the design which you des developed in Qt Designer from Qt Creator so now step one is done step two will be to make access functions make widgets use functions of each other so like when the slider will be moved the display should be increased or decreased so let's see how to do that go to the form part this is your constructor destructor now now we'll start the coding before that let's understand what we are supposed to do if you go in design what we want is whenever quit button is pressed the application should quit whenever the slider is moved this number should increase or decrease accordingly as well as the spin box number is increased should be increased or decreased accordingly and whenever the spin box is increased or decreased the slider and your display should be varied accordingly so all these three parameters should be connected to each other while quit will close the application so to do that right click on quit say go to slot here you have many options what will happen if the button is clicked pressed released so for time being we'll just go for clicked so in the form.cpp they gave they made a new function for you on quit button clicked so all you can you are supposed to write here is close so save it and now if you run it If you press quit, the application is quitting itself. That's what we wanted. So let's jump into the other part. In the constructor, right? So we are using gonna use the same method. UI is the way to access the UI file. So use the same thing, UI now which widget on the UI you wanna access so first of all you would like say you will if you write horizontal slider it's over here and now whatever functions are assigned to horizontal slider you can access by a pointer again say I want to set the slider to zero position so just write set Okay, so slider no. set slider position zero. Now this is the important part where we connect everything, connect each widget to every other widget. So for that you need to write the command connect. Now this instruction contains four parameters. First being from where you are supposed to connect you want to connect second what you want to connect third what is the destination of the connection and fourth where in the destination you want to connect so let's see we want to connect UI horizontal slider what of the horizontal slider this is the source this is the source which we want to connect this source will give you signal and that's this is where the signal and slots come in place so this source is giving me signal so I will write signal 
and what is the signal if the value of the slider is changed so value changed this is my signal Sorry. this is my signal the third parameter is your destination so what is your destination this should change your LCD number and your final parameter will be what in the LCD number and that the destination part is called a slot so the source part is your signal and your destination will be slot and what parameter of LCD number you want to give is the display on the LCD let's close the bracket give a semicolon so now if we run this control R and if we move the slider you can see the display is varying accordingly but that of the spin box is not varying because we have not assigned it yet so let's jump into it so now again connect once you get a hang of it it will be very simple all there are very simple instructions all you have to do is just to remember the syntax and you're good to go so connect your spin box now what of spin box you want to connect it's giving first of all it's giving me signal and what is the signal again value changed then where I want to give the signal is I want to give it to the I want to give it to the horizontal slider I'm giving it to the horizontal slider because this will be the spin box and the slider will be interconnected like there will be a signal from spin box to the slider and slider to the spin box and as the slider value is varying the LCD number will be vary so indirectly when you vary the spin box the LCD number will vary so slot and horizontal slider what are we supposed to change is the value so set set value again close the bracket semicolon and similarly we want to change the value of spin box when the slider is changed so again last instruction connect in this case the source is your slider horizontal slider signal value changed your destination is spin box and what of spin box set value close the bracket semicolon and now when you run this if you vary the slider the value of LCD number as well as the spin box is increasing if you decrease both the values are decreasing if you increase the spin box value you can see the slider position increasing as well as the LCD number increasing similarly if you decrease it's decreasing Good. so this was the first method which was using the code writing hardly we wrote these four lines and one over here five lines of code if you want Qt is such efficient tool you need not write even these five lines of code so we will see how we can do that in the next video where I will explain how we use signals and slots in the UI file itself thank you for watching